everyone. Welcome back to the Ladies Guide. My name is Deanna Tikhanov and I'm a women's health nurse practitioner. And on today's birth control series, I'm going to be talking with you girls, ladies, about the hormonal injection or the hormonal shot. So the hormonal shot is something that most women are a candidate for unless you have a personal history of any kind of cancer or any kind of liver disease, even if it's a benign tumor in the liver, this may not be a good option for you anytime there you have those kinds of conditions, an addition of more hormones to the body is usually contraindicated. So it's very important if you have any medical conditions that you discuss this with your provider before starting the hormonal shot. Um, as I always mentioned in all my videos, this is not this video is not supposed to replace seeing a healthcare provider in person. You guys all have your unique history, medical history, and situations that it's important that that's reviewed. But this is a great tool to get some more information and education about this method and see if it's something that sounds like it might be a good option for you. So like I said, most women are a candidate for the hormonal shot. It is a progestin only method. So as I've talked about in other videos, some birth control methods have two hormones in it, estrogen and progestin, and some birth control methods only have one or none. So this is one of them that is a progestin only method. So if you are not a candidate for estrogen containing birth control, this would be a good option for you. So things like if you're a smoker and you're over 35, or if you have really bad migraines that got either worse with birth control, or you've been told by a neurologist you cannot use estrogen containing birth control, any history whatsoever of blood clots or stroke, definitely you would not want to use something with estrogen and this would be a safe option for you. So that's, you know, again, something you always want to review with your provider in person once you're deciding if this would be a good option for you. But these are reasons why a woman might decide that this would be a good option. So the hormonal shot, when it's used perfectly, so taken as it's supposed to, which is about every three months. So usually when you get this injection and it's given in a few different places, there's two different types of injections, forms of the injection. It could either be given in the muscle or in the fatty tissue of your body. And the medicine is the same, it's just a different route of how it's administered. So you might hear, um, you might have heard friends or family mention, oh, I got a shot on my butt. And other women might say, oh, I got the shot on my arm or my belly. And those are all acceptable ways of, of getting it depending on the um, route of administration, depending on the form of the injection you have. So, but it's something that is an injection and it's given every three months. So usually when you get it done in the office, you'll be told to come back in about 13 14 weeks to get your next injection so when it's when you're coming when you're supposed to on time it's actually up to 99% effective against pregnancy but if you come late then that brings it down to about 94% with typical use factoring in that you may forget to come get your shot or life gets in the way and, and that causes you to be late for your next shot this decreases the effectiveness so something to keep in mind but if you're you think you'll be good at coming in every three months I mean when you think about it that's only four times in the year that you really need to think about birth control, you know, not like a pill that's every single day or different methods that are some more work on your end. You know, some women look at this and say, oh, that's no problem. Every four, four times a year to come in every three months, that's not so bad. So something to think about and reflect within yourself if that sounds like something that wouldn't be too difficult, then this might be a good option for you. Another benefit is that it's private, you know, depending on your situation, some women prefer to keep um, the method that they're using private and it's a it's something that you go into the office, get an injection, and that's it. There's nothing you're bringing home with you really besides a card or if you're putting a little note in your phone of when you need to return for your next shot. So that is how the method works. You're coming in every three months, 99% effective when you're coming in on time, which is a great benefit. Now the side effects, you know, we all love those and it's different for everyone, like I always, always say. So in general, with the injection, what typically happens for most women is between the first one to three injections, give or take, you may experience irregular bleeding on and off. And this could look different for everyone. So this could be random spotting, 
over that time. Um, it could look like having a period for two or three weeks straight at a time, um, or it could just mean that, and, and it could be light. Those two or three weeks, it might be light. It's usually more annoying than anything else, or it might be heavy. The good news is the longer you're on the injection, the more likely it is that your periods are going to completely stop. And that's an added benefit for most women, um, that especially if you have a history of heavy periods. Many women will choose to go on the depot injection because it helps take their periods away to give them that relief and they can get back to their quality of life. You know, especially for women who are having extremely painful, heavy periods, the injection can really be the benefit. The big benefit is that your periods stop with time. However, it takes time. The longer you're on it, really time is your best friend with the, the injection because the longer you're on it, the more likely that your periods will lighten and stop. But particularly after the first or second injection, it is common that you may experience this irregular bleeding and be bleeding on and off. And when you are prepared and kind of know that that might happen, usually it's not so bad. It's tolerated better among women versus if you had no idea and you just were told, oh yeah, your periods are going to stop and then this starts happening, it could be very scary and stressful and frustrating. So it is important to kind of mentally prepare that you may experience irregular bleeding on and off for the first one to three injections. So that's three to nine months. So that is a decent amount of time that you kind of have to prepare. But like I said, the longer you're on the injection, the more likely your periods will stop. And it's not unsafe from a medical standpoint. If your periods do stop, it doesn't mean anything terrible. It's just that the lining inside your uterus is becoming thinner, so there's not as much blood to shed with time. So it's not that there's a buildup inside, it's just that it's not no longer building up to be shed. So that's why many times your periods will stop on the injection. Now with the injection, I probably am sure someone watching this right now has known someone or heard of weight gain with the injection. Out of all the methods, I will say that the injection has the highest likelihood of weight gain out of all the methods. And it has to do with the introduction of the hormone in, the, in your body that tends to trigger you to become hungrier which then if you're not making smart food choices, not as active, under more stress, not sleeping well, all of these factors can impact weight gain. As I've mentioned, you hear me say all the time, it's usually never just one thing that's causing it, but the injection has a little bit more of a risk of weight gain. So when you come in every three months, generally what's happening is you're get, before you're getting the injection, your weight is being checked every three months to really determine if and record if there is a dramatic increase in weight gain and to discuss that and see what things might need to be changed or if maybe the method needs to be changed completely. It does not happen to all women. Again, healthy lifestyle and stress reduction is really important. We have so much more power over our bodies than sometimes I think we let ourselves realize. So it is important to keep keep that in mind, but yes, weight gain can occur with the injection if you are eating things that are not so good for us. Um, and you know, that's subjective. That's a whole other conversation, but uh, that is something that can occur. The other thing that sometimes does occur with women is they may feel depressed, their mood goes down on the injection. Particularly if you already are dealing with depression or anxiety, the um, depo injection or the hormonal injection might not be the best option for you then. It's something that you definitely would want to be very open with your healthcare provider about and monitor that closely and making sure you feel comfortable to let the nurse or the healthcare provider know when you go in for your next injection if there's any changes and they're always checking in with that. Um, that's part of what's going on when you go in every three months, but it's definitely important to keep that dialogue open. Any change in mood, it may not be the best option to continue you on the injection. So something to keep in mind, again, does not affect everyone this way, but particularly if you're already dealing with uh, any mood disorders, this has the potential to increase it. Other thing to keep in mind is the injection does decrease your bone density or your calcium levels while you are using the injection. So what's usually recommended is that you're taking calcium and vitamin D really both together is best to increase the amount of calcium in your body while you're using the injection so that you're 
levels of calcium stay within a normal range and we're not dealing with lower calcium levels in your body. There has been studies that show there's no permanent damage to your bones by being on this injection, but it is best to take the calcium and vitamin D supplement to keep your levels normal. Generally, this method is recommended to be on for the shortest amount of time possible. If another method is an option, you may want to consider switching, giving yourself a break between using the injection because of the calcium levels going down. However, for some women, this may be the only option that really works for them and that they really like and tolerate well. Not all methods are treated the same, of course, and, and women could be affected differently. So it's something, again, that you're talking with your healthcare provider and having that discussion if it's something that they recommend for you to continue or if they want you to stop it for a period of time that you're having that discussion with them. A big thing to keep in mind is that this injection can be stopped at any time, of course, and it does not affect your ability to become pregnant in the long term. However, it can take up to a year from your last shot to get pregnant. So if you're planning to get pregnant in a year and you're like, oh, I wanna get the shot, it might not be the best option for you because even just getting one shot, it could take up to one year before the the effects completely wear off and you're able to get pregnant again. Now I will say that it's important that if you just stop the injection, not to think that, oh, I'm safe because it, I heard it takes up to a year to get pregnant anyway, because of course there's always exceptions, but out of all the birth control methods, there can be what's called a delay to fertility, meaning that it can take up to 12 months from the last shot you got to get pregnant. So something to keep in mind, depending on what your fertility goals are, that you may or may not want to get this injection after hearing the potential side effects over a year's time. So those are the main things with the injection. And again, it's something that's given every three months, 99% effective when you're getting it on time, 94% effective with typical use if you're coming in late or, or forgot to come in to get your injection. So things to keep in mind. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please comment below if you have any questions, anything you want me to clarify. And don't forget to check out my Instagram as well, which goes over different tidbits of each birth control method that I'm gonna talk about each week on The Ladies Guide. Uh, my Instagram is at the underscore the ladies guide so check me out over there as well i love interacting with you all i really appreciate the feedback and i look forward to seeing you in my next video